Hello, good people. How are you doing today? Hope all is well. So I hope um, I hope everything is uh, is going well and everything is going your way. Please let me know um, where you're healing from. So just let me know where you're healing from, and then I will uh, I will give you guys a shout out. Welcome again to Dev Sector Series. Welcome to Dev Sector Series. I'm so happy to have each and every one of you all here. So just let me know where you are healing from. If you're on Facebook, if you're on um, YouTube, if you're on um, on LinkedIn, let me know. So I'm very excited that you are here today on Dev Sector Series. And those of you that hang in there with me every Wednesday, some people were checking checking on me on at uh, at twelve noon. Like ah, uh, I can't seem to see, I can't seem to 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 see the show and, and what have you. So I'm like, okay, what is what is uh, what is happening? And one thing that I like to like inform you guys is that sometimes, you know, on a, on Dev Sector Series, when I invite my guests, they are, um, 12 o'clock is not a good time for them. So I let you all know, you know, just make sure you look at the banner at the time. Most of the, most of the time is at noon, sometimes is um, a little later, you know, because of the, 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 the time and the ske scheduling of our guests. It looks like LinkedIn is having a few issues. Okay, I'm live on LinkedIn now. L LinkedIn was having a bit of an issue just now on their end, but looks like everything is looking good. So, so this is Mr. Ehiz Inaholo watching from Bielsa. Okay, you are in the South South. Okay, so um, welcome, welcome, welcome. Anybody else, please just let me know where you're healing from so I can just, you know, give you guys a shout out, okay? I am, I am having um, a very, very important guest here talking about non- profit sust sustainability of impact organizations because a lot of times social impact organizations have issues with um, with sustainability and uh, when i first met this special guest i mean we you know we're just talking about the sector about the civic space and she was like um you know she said there are issues with regards to sustainability and which I couldn't agree more. So I just um so I just said let me have her speak. And you know, when um when she spoke, she was one of my first guests on Dev Sector series last year. I think it was back in November, you know. So I was like, okay. And you know, she spoke very well at the time, you know. Um, you know, she was quite busy engaging with um, her role at uh, Ford Foundation. And uh, now, uh, uh, you know, she's like, okay, let's let's do this. Let's really have that conversation about sustainability. I got a few more folks. I have Ibitoye Shegun Emmanuel. He says, kudos for the unique efforts towards gender equality. Thank you so much. You know that Funke is a gender lady now. Thank you so much. So I have Olanike Timipa Uge. Thank you for coming. I have Adewumi Adediran from Ikiti State. Oh, thanks for thanks for watching. And then I have Mr. Greg Inaholo. Hey, Efa, nice to see you again. Thank you so much. And then Olanike Timipa Uge saying she's watching from Teenage Network um, Network Abuja. So this is exciting. So. Let me just tell you something, you know, with, with, with the development sector in Africa, I feel like some of the smartest people in the world are right here in our soil. So I want a situation where there's a platform where we're sharing ideas and talking about, you know, what we could do to change the world. So which is really a, an exciting thing. And, you know, we've had great speakers just like you know the speaker that's coming to speak with us today we've had uh, we've had Charles Abani we've had uh, we had Victoria Ibezi Mohairi we've had various special guests we've had um, Hamza Lawa we've had she uh, you know and uh, we've even I even had a a, a pre-recorded um uh, session with uh, Dr. Yudi Okeun of the Youth Alive Foundation so 
we're just having more and more exciting guests coming from various sectors, some youth, gender, you know, persons with disabilities, you know, the sustainable development goals. So just exciting stuff about the development sector, which, you know, it, 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 it's what kind of keeps me charged. You know, some people are like, Effa, when are you going to slow down with this? Because, I mean, how do you manage doing this stuff every week? And I'm like, man, I got to do it because each speaker gives me the foil and the juices to do it the next week. So, you know, which is really exciting. So, um, you know, that's, that's uh, um, uh, what, what we're doing. So it looks like our guest is ready to go. So what I'm going to do is share her video bio right quick before I introduce her. Now, my, my editing software was acting up today. So y'all yeah, just bear with me, but the content is there. So you will see how, how much of a powerhouse that we're inviting here today to speak of which I am very excited about. Let me just see if, okay, it's done exporting. So here we go. Let me remove my- Lufunke Barua is a seasoned Nigerian gender and development expert, feminist and public speaker with a focus on gender advocacy, women's rights, civil society strengthening, public policy and governance. From 2000 to 2015, she was a program officer at the defunct Petroleum Special Trust Fund and the gender advisor at the Office of the Senior Special Assistant to the President on the Millennium Development Goals, now SDGs, and as technical assistance on research and policy planning in the Ministry of Communication and Digital Technology. In 2015, she was appointed as the Chief Executive Officer of the Nigerian Women's Trust Fund a technical and financial resource for women in politics and decision-making in Nigeria, where she set the strategic vision and mobilized resources. Until June 2020, she served as the project management specialist, civil society and media for the U.S. Agency for International Development, USAID Nigeria, where she designed and pioneered multi-million dollar civil society strengthening project with a gender-inclusive lens. Funke is currently the program officer for the Gender, Racial, and Ethnic Justice at the Ford Foundation's Office for West Africa in Lagos, where she leads the foundation's commitment to supporting women's rights to address violence against women and girls. Funke is named as one of the 17 women changing the world by the Institute for Inclusive Development and a member of the Women Waging Peace Network. She has been widely recognized for her work with the Nigerian Women's Trust Fund by The Guardian, She Leads Africa, and other publications, and has received several accolades for her advocacy on the inclusion of females in strategic economic, social, and political positions in Nigeria. Funke was educated at the University of Abuja with a BSc in Business Administration and the University of Nigeria Unsuka with an MBA and completed further courses at the University of East Anglia in Public Policy and Management and the University of York. She is currently pursuing an MA in Corruption and Governance at the University of Sussex. Allow me to introduce to some and present to others Mrs. Olufunke Barua. Hello, yes, hello, Ifua. Funke. How are you doing? I'm fine. <laughs> Good Thank to you, Efua. Good to see you. Good to see you. And, uh, hello, everyone. Good to see you, too. <laughs> yeah, so everybody is here to see you. I mean, the comments are just streaming in. I'm just really excited. Yeah. On, uh, on it looks like Facebook and LinkedIn are really lighting up. So, um, yeah. so I just wanted to just kind of, you know, get get a sense from you in terms of like when I when I first had a conversation with you, where you were always emphasizing in the development sector and and impact organizations of, of on sustainability. So, what's really kind of led you to having that conversation in your, exp uh, in ex in your extensive experience in the sector? Thank you very much, Efua. And this mm. is uh, 
good job that you're doing here. And I'm happy with Thank the you. way the series has changed. I was beginning <laughs> to think I was on a movie set. I didn't even know you we were, we were talking about me until I hear from Kia. I was like, okay, am I in the right room? Thank you and well done. This is really thank great. You. Um, thank you. And thank you to our listeners. Thanks for joining us. I know everyone thank is you. busy in this unusual yeah. time. So for making our time exactly. to come, listen to me. Uh, and if we are, I, I, I really appreciate that. Uh, so why, why do I harp on sustainability often? It's because mm-hmm. of growth. Uh, the day we stop growing is the day we die. Uh, mm-hmm. you know, we start dying when we stop growing. So growth is inevitable. Change is inevitable. We must grow. Uh, it's either you're growing forward or you're growing backwards. Uh, you're, you're losing uh, steam or you're gaining momentum. You have a choice. And for organizations across West Africa and Nigeria in particular, I think we have to come to the realization and make up our mind that we must grow from handouts. Uh, we must grow uh, to become sustainable, to be able to run mm-hmm. and finance and resource our own development. Mm-hmm. Uh, development without growth is not progress. You mm-hmm. must be able to resource your own development. Nobody can train your children better than you can. And so mm-hmm. we must learn to uh, find ways beyond the aid. What are we going to do going forward? If you're an organization and you're not, or you're leading an organization and you're not thinking about that, I'm sorry. Uh, when it comes, it won't be a surprise because you just failed to plan. Mm. So I strongly believe as money comes in, as aid comes in, mm-hmm. what kind of social impact investments are we making as uh, mm-hmm. local organizations? Because mm-hmm. you cannot expect that resources will continue to come uh, to the global mm-hmm. south, from the global north, mm-hmm. just like mm-hmm. that. Uh, we're talking about holding our own destinies and being able mm-hmm. to direct the way we want our development to go. He who pays the piper will definitely dictate the tune. Uh, mm-hmm. Ford, for instance, will have a strategic framework. UNDP, the UN mm-hmm. will, MacArthur mm-hmm. will, Osiwa will, mm-hmm. uh, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundations. All these foundations will have things they want to achieve. But nobody knows best how to mm-hmm. develop Nigeria than Nigerians. I completely mm-hmm. believe that. And NGOs, mm-hmm. social uh, in, in, impact in investment organizations, startups, not-for-profits, uh, enterpr- whatever you do in the social sector, you must find ways to move the needle slowly towards your independence in terms of your resources, your ideas, and your development. The, the, the time to start planning that was yesterday. The next best time is now. Thank you. Defua, did I lose you? Or am I hanging? Hello. Hello? Hello, FY. Did I lose you? Sorry about that, Funke. Hello, I, I wasn't sure whether that was from me or from you. Hello, I can't hear you. Oh, 
Oh, so the, the comment says they can hear me, they can see me, but they lost you. So you were the one who went off. FY, we still can't hear you. I can't hear you. Did you check to see if you're on mute? But everybody else says they can see me, they can hear me. Still can't hear you. Do you... If I log out, we will lose the comments. So I, I didn't want to lose the comments in case there were questions. Can, can you ask the participants if they can see me, can hear me, sorry? Ah, okay, okay. Thank you, Bridget. Bridget says she can hear me, uh, but can't hear FY. Technology. Thank you, Greg. Try to reach F one. Can you guys hear me now? Can you guys hear me now? Awesome. Yes, we can hear. All you. right, great. Thank you guys for your patience. I appreciate it. You know, we we live in the era of technology, so you kind of mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. So um, I, I'm not sure whether you. Um, I'm sure you were able to answer the question. So I guess yes, I'm just going to move on to the next one. Yes, because they could hear me. Yes. Yeah, so let me just move on to the next one then. Um, okay, so in your current role, I know you covered this a bit. How has sustainability impacted your relationships with grantees? So how are you, because um, this is something you are passionate about from the onset. So how have you been able to encourage your grantees to really look into sustainability? Uh, so one of the things we do is uh, Ford is an organization that invests mm -hmm. in social justice and equity. And we always say that we're not prescriptive, uh, mm -hmm. that we try to give our partners uh, room mm -hmm. to improve themselves and to tell us the ideas. Uh, because without the ideas, uh, I actually don't have a job. That's <laughs> Most people think the power rests with the uh, people working with international foundations mm -hmm. but if you don't come to mm -hmm. us with your ideas and ask mm -hmm. for funding we, we, we are out of mm -hmm. the job so mm -hmm. really one of the things we stress is to say when you come with your mm -hmm. plans and your proposals mm -hmm. uh what next i always ask mm -hmm. what next happens how do you hope if suddenly if you ask me for a two year support a three year support mm -hmm. after those number of years what are your plans mm -hmm. to sustain this initiative uh, mm. in the event that we can no longer support it. Uh, mm -hmm. So I always also advise for organizations to have programs and then have projects mm. as subsets of those programs. I see. Many organizations have projects and projects are time-bound. Mm -hmm. they, they are short-term, uh, mm -hmm. at best medium-term, but programs are mm -hmm. long-term. For instance, mm. if you have you know, an organization that say our thematic focus is GBV, is women's mm -hmm. economic empowerment. What mm -hmm. you need to be designing under those two subheads is to have programs mm -hmm. that help you address those thematic areas, not mm -hmm. isolated projects. When mm -hmm. you have isolated projects, you cannot plan sustainably. You cannot plan for the future because once the project is over, it's over. You will not That's know what true. But That's if you true. have programs and you say, this is how I get to point from point A to B, and you have projects inside mm -hmm. those programs that help you achieve mm -hmm. that. When you take up one project and you finish that mm -hmm. part of the project, it needs to mm -hmm. feed into another bigger picture of that of your program. Mm. That way it's easy to sustain. So you can give portions of that program to development partners or to funders to support different for. So at every point in time, that project is alive. That program is alive. The program, Even yes. if you end the project. Mm. For example, let's use the DevTech series. The DevTech mm -hmm. series is a program. Funke's mm -hmm. session is a project. Mm -hmm. ah. My session will not continue forever. 
But you have mm -hmm. other speakers lined up to speak, mm -hmm. to talk about DevTech sector series. Your sustainability mm -hmm. impact, uh, your, your sustainability conversation. The mm -hmm. topic you gave me is it mm -hmm. was on, uh, if I recall correctly, let me look at that again. On the... How said to I be speaking on yes, building sustainable, sustainable impact, impact organizations, organizations in, in Africa. Africa. Now mm -hmm. that is a, that can be a program. Yeah. How do you build sustainable impact organizations? Mm -hmm. You are going to be mm -hmm. looking at staffing, human resource, mm -hmm. capacity of uh, staff to write fantastic mm -hmm. concept notes, uh, mm -hmm. to design innovative strategies, technology, uh, social impact investing. Mm -hmm. uh, making these organizations into uh, not just not-for-profits, but maybe like a limited mm -hmm. guarantee that can also raise resources externally to support uh, what are the kind of investments you need to... So these different components, you can flesh them out as projects. So mm -hmm. the simple one is DevTech Sector Series and is, is a project, is a program. Mm -hmm. The sustainability mm -hmm. conversation is a project on that DevTech mm -hmm. Series. In mm -hmm. fact, phone care session is just an activity. I see. So that, this that's is as deep as amazing. As, 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 as amazing. That. So, when, so when, when you can link those things together, they're not mm. that it's not rocket science. It's just mm. that we interchange so many of these things. People interchange program with project, they, they you know, mm -hmm. an activity. When I ask mm -hmm. people, you act, is this this activity? People list programs as activity. I'm like, this is too big for an activity. Mm. This should be a program with subsets mm. of units that can then flesh it out into you know different projects and all. So uh, if we break Amazing. it down into such, such small details and not use too much grammar, just use mm. everyday examples, people will get it. Amazing. You I, you just, you know, and, and I keep telling people that how you know when somebody knows what you're talking about is when you can explain it to a layman and break it down in layman's terms for people mm -hmm. to understand because that, 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 that just just settles it you get what i'm saying yes, so like yeah. so with with sustainability now you know what do you think the current state is in africa with regards to sustainability do you feel like organizations are, are aware have they been able to impact the continent through sustainability and you mm. know how how would that work because you you are now your your your, your role now is no longer national is regional so what's, what are your observations? So across the West Africa region, I think we're doing mm -hmm. this. I think mm -hmm. there are fantastic organizations from mm -hmm. Dakar to Accra to Lagos to Abuja. There are organizations doing... You can see the youth movement. And if there's mm -hmm. any group or subset that takes the, 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 the mm -hmm. top for me, it's young people. Mm -hmm. Young mm -hmm. people organizing. Young feminists organizing. Doing wonderful things with limited resources from the abroad, like I like to say. <laughs> from know? the abroad. <laughs> <laughs> you find, look at the NSAS movement. This was resourced mm -hmm. by young people, which do not, do not give them any money. Look mm -hmm. at what's happening in Dakar with the uh, uprising and the protest and young rappers in the music industry, you know, mm -hmm. using their voice. And there's no money coming from anywhere. I think we're getting the... We're, we're waking up and we're smelling the coffee. We can mm. smell the roses. We know that, mm. yes, we need to do this on our own. Go check mm. movements and ideologies that haven't been resourced from the West. They last longer. Mm -hmm. Look at how during the military era, all mm. the groups, uh, the CLOs, the uh, Nadecos and all mm. these people had resources that they pulled together from within. There's a lot of money here. We haven't just found a way to appeal to Nigerians that mm -hmm. investing in the social sector is good business. We need to mm -hmm. find a way to say, if the people are not healthy, if you work in health, for instance, mm -hmm. you need to go to uh, organizations in the pharmaceutical industry or in the healthcare industry and say, if the, if the country is not healthy, people will just be buying drugs to stay alive. Mm -hmm. Why don't you pursue people buying drugs to stay healthy? Mm -hmm. just to even eat better and all that. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean your business will collapse. Mm -hmm. If in the education sector you are and, and, and mm -hmm. private sector people who produce textbooks and they don't care mm -hmm. or other private sector organizations they don't want to invest in the education sector you tell them, what about your human resource? Mm -hmm. You don't invest in the education how do you get your next 
crop of staff, the takeover generation of your exactly. current staff. How do you exactly. resource human resources? Provide resources for us to continue to push the needle and to continue mm. to work with government to ensure that resources and policies and frameworks to improve education in Nigeria. Mm. Mm. It will have a ripple mm. effect on your organization's human resource mm. capital mm. in the future. Being able to tie small bits and pieces of information, no big grammar here. They mm. need to know. Dangote needs to be able to invest in education in Nigeria because if he needs to have the number, be the number one billionaire in Africa, he needs mm -hmm. human resources to do that. He does, he does. So the Elimelu yes. Foundation has identified what they need and they mm -hmm. need to continue to invest in entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. He's a smart man. More entrepreneurs means more profit for the banking industry. Exactly. You, you know, so people need to be able to tie these things to everyday issues. And, mm. and for me, we're doing, some are doing very well. The old mm -hmm. guys maybe need to get with the program and find <laughs> better and innovative ways mm. uh, to, to then do this. But yes, I think across the region, I'm happy with the level of organizing mm. and mm -hmm. across the social sector and how young mm. people are breaking barriers, especially young feminists, how they're breaking barriers. Look at the... the, the the teamwork with the NSAS, well, who would have mm -hmm. thought that the very same name that people called young feminists, oh, mm -hmm. because they're single, oh, because they're not married, oh, they hate men, oh, they're bitter. <laughs> they were the same people who provided the resources that helped the NSAS movement do what they do today. Exactly. So I, I think, I think really making that connection with sustainability and letting uh, um, so really selling so social sector. And there was something that I listened to, was it uh, Osai Alile from um, the uh, Aspire Coronation Trust Foundation? One thing she said, he said, non-profits and social enterprise, they need to, to really treat their organizations like a business. So you are saying, exactly. this is my That's value said, the, the business of social exactly the social sector exactly the we business of we are, we are social treating it. it's a charity yes mm -hmm. but every organization needs a business model a lot exactly. of our organizations don't have a business not just a strategy have a business model how do you want mm -hmm. to sustain your organization people need to have those deep thinking mm -hmm. and this mm -hmm. proliferation of ngos everybody saturating the space there is mm -hmm. not enough money to go around so you want to find something unique about you and about mm -hmm. your organization that sells you differently. You need to sell yourself. What's your universal Amazing. selling point? I did a mm. course in marketing, and I think it mm. has helped me more in my development journey than my policy, <laughs> my planning, and all that. <laughs> it's about selling yourself. You exactly. need to be able to sell yourself. A lot of people can't sell. They can't even sell a finger. Mm. <laughs> you, know, so you need to be, you need those elevator speeches. One minute, mm -hmm. three minutes, mm -hmm. you are in tune. You know, you're in mm -hmm. touch with people who can provide the kind of resources or networks that you need to move mm -hmm. to the next level. How do you sell your pitch to those people? You need to practice and practice and practice and practice. Interesting. Really, really, really something. And I think you've already alluded to the answer to the question. I was going to put how can it be replicated, but you've already talked about mm -hmm. that. Um, so I want to talk to you about the stakeholders involved in building an impact-driven organization. You touched on it a bit, but just to be more specific so that folks can know um, the way forward from this conversation. The stakeholders involved in? Mm. In, in what? In building an impact-driven organization. Because in order for you to be impact-driven, obviously, like you said earlier, you have to be sustainable. So yeah. who are the stakeholders that need to be involved in building an impact-driven organization? I think your best, your, your number one, your number mm -hmm. one uh, fans in an organization mm -hmm. is that mm -hmm. organization, the members of those organizations, mm -hmm. the team, mm -hmm. the staff. Mm -hmm. uh, you need to be intentional about employing mm -hmm. people who have a passion. Uh, I know there is no job. There are mm -hmm. no jobs right now. The job market mm -hmm. is, is you know, saturated with so many mm -hmm. uh, applicants, people looking for work. So the tendency mm -hmm. is you find that a lot of people come into employment not because they really want to do that work or because they have a passion mm. for that work, but mostly, mm -hmm. uh, you know, because uh, that's what is immediately available. Mm -hmm. There are two people that come into organizations. One are those who, are, uh, the first set are those who really have the, the vision, the passion, and that's really what they love doing. And they were looking mm -hmm. for an opportunity to be able to express themselves. The others are mm -hmm. those who are just looking for a means of livelihood. 
Exactly. The other, the, so the first ones are easy to manage. You don't have to mm-hmm. do any struggle to keep them. You have to actually make them stay because once you don't fulfill that desire, they may leave. The second mm-hmm. one are the tough, the toughest. Uh, half of them would eventually fall in love with that work, develop mm-hmm. their passion. I used to call mm-hmm. myself an accidental feminist, for instance. <laughs> develop their passion and their mm-hmm. passion in that work, and then mm-hmm. they will, you know, stay. The others mm-hmm. just want to feed their families, mm-hmm. meet their needs. Those are the deep, dangerous ones because if they don't share that passion with you, and it's just a job to them. So there's mm-hmm. a place for passion, and of course there's a place for interest uh, because passion alone doesn't pay bills. But exactly. also you want to make sure you are working with people of like minds. Mm-hmm. So your first, your first set of people stakeholders are the people in that organization how do they sell mm-hmm. your organization what's the passion they bring mm-hmm. to the table they will go to meetings mm-hmm. for you they will write proposals for you they will write concept mm-hmm. notes for you they will work mm-hmm. as admin finance mm-hmm. or whatever you have depending mm-hmm. on the size of your organization the second yeah. group are the ecosystem in which you work in you need to be able to build alliances with that ecosystem when you work on health look for networks that work on health and not just health broadly what part of their mm-hmm. sexual and reproductive health? Is it infectious diseases? Is it HIV AIDS and what have you? Is it nutrition? Look for organizations within that ecosystem that you can work mm-hmm. with that mm-hmm. can help you build uh, that together with them. You can sort of build a community of practice where you can share resources and, you know, mm-hmm. ideas and do peer review and work together and maybe even uh, bid for bigger uh, grants mm-hmm. or, or mm-hmm. sustainability frameworks in the future. So that's mm-hmm. to the third, of course, will be your uh, your partners. I don't want to call them mm-hmm. beneficiaries. You know, mm-hmm. your partners, the people mm-hmm. who you work with, who your services mm-hmm. are, are are meant for, or who, who are mm-hmm. beneficiaries of what you do. They are also mm-hmm. very important. In no particular order, I'm just listing mm-hmm. these out as, as, as they appeal to me. Mm-hmm. But they are the third, because they matter. They're mm-hmm. the reason why you do the work you do. Mm-hmm. And for you to be sustainable, you need to be able to fill that vacuum, that, you found, you, that gap that you noticed in mm-hmm. the first place that drove your passion mm-hmm. to work in this area. So mm-hmm. you would notice that I didn't even list international development partners. Mm-hmm. I didn't even list the private sector. Once mm-hmm. those three people are on board, it's just a matter mm-hmm. of time, you know, before you can really uh, connect the dots in terms of what you want to do and where you want mm-hmm. to be in the future. By the time you come up with uh, your, your strategy on sustainability or on taking this mm-hmm. forward, and the demand and hunger for your work, mm-hmm. for your side, look mm-hmm. at organizations, for instance, are, and, and forgive me, I don't really want to mention names. Look at EIE has mm-hmm. stayed, enough is enough, has stayed on and relevant for, for, for almost mm-hmm. a decade right now or more mm-hmm. uh, since the Occupy Nigeria period in 2011 because mm-hmm. they keep churning out materials, information, mm-hmm. resources mm-hmm. that the people want. Same mm-hmm. thing with an organization like Yaga, same mm-hmm. you know, youth movement, same thing with mm-hmm. an organization like Code, Budget. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If people don't like the kind of outputs that come out from your organization, even if you are getting all the grants in the world, you will remain in obscurity. Exactly. And, uh, uh, social, social impact work is not a popularity contest, but let's be not frank with ourselves. You also mm-hmm. need people to know what you offer and what you're doing. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. People need to people need to know you, so you need to just try to get out of obscurity. And in the, while you're doing all that, really building the, the the stakeholder network. So I'm going to and okay. Before I go to my next question, if you guys have any questions for Funke, please put it in the comment section because she's talked about a lot of rich information. And if you guys have any questions for her, please make sure you put it in the comment section so that when it gets to when when it gets to that part of the uh, conversation, we will then uh, post your questions up on the screen and then F- uh, Funke will just uh, um, be able to answer those questions for you. Okay, yeah. so my next question is, now you talked about being an accidental feminist. Now, uh, <laughs> uh, I, I, I feel like I'm, a, I'm an accidental development enthusiast as well. Mm-hmm. That story is another, for another day. But uh, so as a feminist, you've worked with multiple organizations that have worked on gender issues. So how important is it for them to be sustainable and how can they make that happen? Because 
with what I've noticed, there are a lot of, I mean, as you know, one of the marginalized groups is women. So the need is vast. So how can we have more sustainable gender-based organizations working on gender-based issues and how can they make that happen? So the, the model is not entirely different. Uh, mm -hmm. But because we work in an area that, you know, is at both sides of the extreme, mm -hmm. either very well-loved or well-hated mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. in, in gender work. And mm -hmm. um, many organizations put more money in other issues like anti-corruption, mm -hmm. uh, like mm -hmm. healthcare, like mm -hmm. uh, natural resource and climate change, mm -hmm. uh, technology. Uh, mm -hmm. Those are the big big areas but mm -hmm. one of the ways to help uh gender focused organizations is to mm -hmm. not narrow your vision mm -hmm. yes i am one of those who preach have thematic areas don't fly everywhere i see yeah. a lot of um ngos who have mm -hmm. um their and i've talked about it many times they do health mm -hmm. they do education they do women empowerment and skills acquisition. They do violence against women and girls. They do women's political participation. They do women in technology, women in agri. Everything, once mm -hmm. women are part of it, mm -hmm. they are there. Mm -hmm. I see disability-led organizations too by women. They are doing mm -hmm. women in disability education. Mm -hmm. They are doing women mm -hmm. in disability in politics. Mm -hmm. They are doing women in... The, you cannot do that. You will mm -hmm. not survive. Mm -hmm. You'll be a jack of all trade and a master of none. The key is to have a niche. Where do mm -hmm. you want to focus on? Have that exactly. niche. Find people who work in that area. Build that ecosystem. Mm -hmm. I keep talking about ecosystem because we can't work in isolation. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't be an island. Yes, you must exactly. be a master in one particular area, but you need other mm -hmm. rulers. A king is not a powerful mm -hmm. king. If he's the only king in the whole wide world, you're not ah, the yes, so. or God. Mm -hmm. You know, what's the use of a one president of the whole world when he doesn't have mm -hmm. other presidents to work with? So, Exactly. But you also need to then build yourself in that area that you work in. Build mm -hmm. your capacity and your and your and your strengths in that area that you work in. And mm -hmm. then find the kind of organizations that resource that area and push your push your luck far. Mm -hmm. Don't be limited to when it is uh, women in politics. Your own is mm -hmm. all about. We want women in parliament. We want uh, uh, women represented, uh, representatives. We want parties to put women. We've been doing, been there, done that. Been there, done that. Still yeah. news. What mm -hmm. else can you bring to the table? Find other ideas. Are you even looking at doing research? Mm. What's happening with all the female legislators mm -hmm. or the women in politics, for instance? You know, mm -hmm. how have they fared over the years? Mm -hmm. The comparative mm -hmm. analysis attack mm -hmm. uh, people in, in, in uh, the political elites with these figures to say, mm -hmm. see all the women that have been in, but look at the astounding mm -hmm. uh, work that they're doing. Don't you think mm -hmm. we should have more women? What kind of mm -hmm. strategy? I would love to fund mm -hmm. that kind of strategy. You know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Look at all other things, you know, mm -hmm. how women are able to balance their humanity, you know, uh, and ethics and mm -hmm. work uh, mm -hmm. and how it's impacting mm -hmm. Uh, the GDP mm -hmm. of our mm -hmm. country. I've mentioned this so many times. I know there are studies on how mm -hmm. uh, women in, 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 in mm -hmm. more women in decision-making mm -hmm. positions, you know, mm -hmm. uh, or in economic life affects our GDP, things like that. Mm -hmm. Something mm -hmm. different, not just shouting, we're going mm -hmm. on the street, hey, we want more women, mm -hmm. hey, 35%. Mm -hmm. well, mm -hmm. If it's policy you want to focus on and all your work is going to be on policy and how to ensure that those, you know, laws and policies and uh, uh, procedural mm -hmm. frameworks are in place. Focus on that. Let those who are good with the protests go on. If yours is the activism and the demand for mm -hmm. inclusion, focus on that. Add one or two more things, but don't spread too thin. Are you looking? I've not seen NGOs saying, I'm doing women in politics, but I'm focusing on women in politics at councillor level. At what level? Women are cheated in this area. I'll give you the example of India. When women wanted to enter, you know, break through uh, the political mm -hmm. sphere in India, they left all the men at the parliament and all. They went to the wards and the council's area mm -hmm. and infiltrated that space. What I strategies see. are you using? Why is everybody focusing on National Assembly, on State House mm -hmm. of Assembly? What's happening? 
at the at the council level, at the ward level? Is it you even want to look at boards? There are thousands of agencies in Nigeria. What's the distribution of women on these boards? Are you working on sexual harassment? Focus, focus. If you're working on sexual harassment, is it in institutions? Is it in formal, is it in the informal sector? Is it in the formal sector? Is it in private establishments or public establishments? Is it in institutions of higher learning? Is it among young people? I haven't seen anybody looking at sexual harassment in the marketplace. That happens a lot. Apart from a few young feminists who did the market match wants to say, stop touching us when we come to the market. Look at the impact of that work. I've been looking for this. Wow. I don't know whether you know about the market match. I think it was in 2018 or 2019. I right? heard about it. Yes. And they had this it. thing spread across. Stop touching women mm. and girls when we come to the markets. Leave mm. our bodies are our own. Targeted, strategic, intentional, innovative work will be sustainable. I am sure I've derailed a little from your from your from no, your question. No, it's no, but, no. But, you, you know, you, you, you really talked things. about staying focused. You say, you really talked about making sure that you stay focused and you're known for something. You know, because that's that's what I I teach in, in my seminars that you need to be known for something. You you get what I'm saying? Like even you know, yes, you are with Ford Foundation, but your brand is known mm -hmm. for being mm -hmm. a gender advocate. You are not mm -hmm. everywhere. You're like, this mm -hmm. is where I'm at. And I feel mm -hmm. like that is what, um, that is what organizations And I even to also do. have a niche. Gender is also wide. My work has yes. evolved around women's political participation or mm -hmm. gender-based violence. Mm -hmm. I haven't gone mm -hmm. into uh, women uh, health or education. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that that's yeah. not important to me. But I can't do all. I can't do You can't do everything. I, I can't mm -hmm. do education, child marriage, female gender, those parts mm. and components can come under my work on GBV. But my mm. expertise has resolved, revolved around women in decision-making and GBV. There's, there's, there's one question I want to ask before I transition into, um, before I, I'm transitioned to the audience. Like I said, mm. guys, if you have any questions, start, start spilling them over right now. So like, what do you feel like an impact organization can do. I know we talked about that, um, you know, organizations need to learn how to be sustainable within. What can they do mm -hmm. to attract the attention of organizations like the Ford Foundation for Partnership mm -hmm. while still working to make sure that they are self-sustaining? So can they work? So organizations are saying, yes, I have donor funding I'm, I'm i have donor funding but i really need to ped back pedal into sustainability how can i do that and still maintain partnerships for my smaller projects within my program you need to have a strategic plan and i always mm. tell organizations it doesn't have to be to a 200 page document i have seen five page i have made five six page mm. strategic documents mm -hmm. This is how we want to get to. This is what I need to do. For the next five mm. years, this is what I want to focus on. Organizations want to work with. Development partners want to work with organizations that have a plan. You can't work with people that don't have a plan or follow the money. It's just when there is a, when HIV is the in thing, we move. When mm. GBV is the in thing, we move. When women, disability rights is the issue, we move. And you are caught everywhere. So you need to have that strategic mm -hmm. focus and plan. What's your plan? Is it written down? Have stakeholders look at your plan for you. Is this thing even doable for me? Mm. And, 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 and truly, if you really know what you're doing and you're doing the little things and you put yourself out, there's simple things like, do you even have a page? You don't need to have a website. Mm. Do you even have a, a LinkedIn profile for your organization, an Instagram mm. or a Twitter page for your organization. And thank, thank, thank God for uh, um, what... Um, What's the name of this website interface you can actually get on your own now? WordPress. WordPress. You can, you WordPress. Design, you can design your own and talk about it and churn out information. Fill a need, mm. fill a niche and a gap. Mm. Every organization that can solve a problem will be, will be looked at. I have told you about organizations that I'm looking for. They're not even looking mm. for me. But I've seen something mm. that I like in what they do. And I need them. And innovation, innovation, have innovation. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, when I was CEO of Women Fund, we had an act, a, a project called um, Idea Thorn. 
Mm, and it was I remember calling it. out to young people to say send in ideas. We have over mm. 5,000 NYS from different batches sending mm. in ideas about mm. how they can how we can change the status quo of women mm. in in, in politics and in decision making in Nigeria. So, so there are so many things. If you do some of these things, you would find that you yourself you would attract donor funding. That doesn't stop you. In fact, donors would be happy to hear that you're doing something else to resource mm. what you're doing. And one key thing, I have seen organizations sending proposals and all they mm -hmm. write, if they need 200,000 to do that work, they want for to do all the 200,000. What are you bringing to the table? Mm. That tells me that as soon as this project is done, it is finished. It is finished. Even if you don't have any money elsewhere that you mm. are putting in the project, can you just say that our in-kind contribution to this is staff time? Mm. Maybe rather than charge 20% or 50% of staff time, 10% mm. of staff time is mm. contribution to the project. Mm. We will remove this from the cost and use it as contribution to the project. Mm. And if you've been able to raise resources, which I was doing in, in, in my other life, for, from other sources, you can plow back and say, we are putting in 10,000 into this project. You don't need to pay for this. We would mm. give this back. Mm. That's how you are building a sustainable structure for yourself. I you see. get used to it. I recently received a proposal from an international organization who are funding whose budget was about 800,000 and they, they, they had just asked us to bring 200,000 and they had 600,000. I didn't even, I didn't even argue with them. That was fantastic. Wow. That was like a quarter. Yes. Wow. I am yet to see any local organization do that. That was like a quarter of the resources. Imagine asking, oh, this is going to cost 800, but we just need 200 from you. Uh, uh, we will, we will plow in eight, uh, 600. Well, you find organizations charge you uh, uh, staff time. They charge you for project manager, finance mm. manager. Then they come down and charge you for development of, of reports. And I'm wondering, what are your staff doing if you are going to mm. be asking the donor to pay for report writing? Yes, exactly. Printing is another thing. But don't mm. charge me, uh, uh, the, uh, a donor, for report writing and development. But if you are charging people. for staff time, why well, are you charging you for development? Or you have an M&E officer. I have even seen some weird ones. You have an M&E officer whom you are charging 25 to 30% of time to mm -hmm. the project. And mm -hmm. you are still asking for monitoring and evaluation. Okay. Costs. You know. That's a, a little bit of double dipping right there. So Sometimes they don't even know because that evaluation person in the office you are not tasking that person to work. Mm -hmm. You're just giving that person just a free rider. Mm. So you, they probably are going to get an external consultant to still do M and E. When there's a staff who is, who is pulling salary, you know. So I these see. are the ways we also waste money. I'm not even looking at it as double dipping. I'm looking at it as maybe they don't even know. Mm. Because even when you want to double dip, you cover yourself, right? But they may not even know. Because some people mm. will put an M&E consultant and there's an M&E officer. If that M&E officer you have cannot do the work of the M&E consultant, sack that person. Have and a consultant who does, does, who does the work per project and he's paid and he's not on mm. full time on your, on your mm -hmm, payroll. Mm -hmm. That's the way to save money. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, so what you're even talking about now, because you from the first third of this conversation, you were talking about sustainability and even revenue generation through uh, relationships with stakeholders. Now, this time, you're even talking about cost control, like Absolutely. because there are a lot of wastages. So if mm -hmm. you're talking about mm -hmm. cost control now, the money that you're saving, you can use that as, a, as sustainability, which is, yes. really, which is really, really something. But that is... So um, you can charge them and eat to the project, but mm -hmm. the staff should be able to, to, to do it. Or you mm -hmm. remove that staff who is going mm -hmm. to just be there and he's the one that will be asking the money consultant, are you done? When are you submitting the reports? Come on, what's the person doing? The project officer should be able to write a report. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't be asking con the number of consultants we see on projects scare me because I'm like, if this office is just a conduit pipe, consultants are the ones doing the work, 
and your mm. staff don't have the skills to do that work, there is a problem. There's a problem. There yeah. is a problem. That's where all the money mm. from your mm -hmm. grant is going to external people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's really, it's really something that you're saying this because it's, you're, you're talking about a lot of cost, cost control mechanisms in terms of internally your human resources and even having resources, even the cost savings you're having, you can even use it to build the capacity of your current staff so that they can actually um, build on projects. And sometimes yeah, yeah. you can even save more money by not even, by hiring experienced hires. You say you have to have so, 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 so years yeah. of experience yeah. because you're And even investments, and people work. don't think about investments. Mm -hmm. You may not be, of mm -hmm. course you can't invest, do not got money. Mm -hmm. But there are some of resources, course. unrestricted funding in your, that just sits in your account. What are yes. they doing when you're exactly. done with the project? Maybe monies you've been paid, because uh, mm -hmm. some organizations let you charge in direct calls and all those mm -hmm. things, and you've been paid to do that, and you just keep those monies. Why don't you invest them? Yes. You have a pension scheme for your staff mm -hmm. to guard against the future when they leave, mm -hmm. or to ensure that they stay because there's a health insurance and mm -hmm. there's a pension scheme for them, mm -hmm. and there are other uh, you know packages in the, in mm -hmm. the remuneration, not just if mm -hmm. it's from every month. Yes. Do we invest resources in organizations? And what kind of skills are we doing? And I've told you this, FOA, that you'd mm -hmm. have organizations with fantastic buildings, very huge conference rooms mm -hmm. sitting there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I used to rent out my conference room. And my program and my, and my um, office assistant, who just cleaned the office in the morning, I said, no, 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 no. You can't just clean the office in the morning and in the afternoon and you sit all day. You have to be useful. We made the conference room up for rent. People, if you want to use it, and she serves tea, she helps with photocopy, and we charge a sum. You can't fault that. Exactly. And we even said staff can begin to, the time staff don't have anything to do. There's no project. Mm -hmm. If you go out mm -hmm. and you can find work or consultancy, mm -hmm. you bring it back to the organization. We have a sharing formula. You use resources. Mm -hmm. So long as you declare these things, and mm -hmm. don't take advantage of your organization and do mm -hmm. your own private business while mm -hmm. running on other company time. Mm -hmm. So there are several ways uh, to, to ensure. And then have, have people who give their time to your organization. That way mm -hmm. you can also save resources. There are people who are just looking for where to give two hours a week. Mm -hmm. But in Nigeria, we want people to do internship or to volunteer. Mm -hmm. You want them to work from nine to five. It's not possible. No, it's not possible. No. A volunteer not should not do, I think international standards, if you are correct me if I'm wrong, I think it shouldn't be more than like 10, 20 like hours. All the time like I was doing a program 20, abroad. Like 20, 10 to 20 hours a week. It's not even it's, up to that. I was running yeah. a program, I think in East Anglia, you can't work more mm. than 10 hours or 12 hours in a week mm -hmm, or 20 mm -hmm. hours, you know, because a full uh, uh, schedule is 40 hours or 45 hours mm -hmm. a week. So yes. you can't do more than 25% of that. I think it's 10 or 12.5 hours mm -hmm. a week. So if I have an organization and I'm just looking for IT consultants or m and &E people, these are skills that you don't need them day-to-day -day like finance or, mm -hmm. and you say, I just need you two hours a day or three times a week. And mm -hmm. since 12 hours, three times a week, uh, maybe Monday, Wednesday and Friday, mm -hmm. I need four mm -hmm. hours of your time, 10 to 12, mm -hmm. come do this work. And, and that person can move to other organizations, make exactly. more income and you save money. Mm -hmm. it, it's not just about having a ton of staff flocking your organization and mm -hmm. when you ask people in a day, and I mean, I was a tough CEO. I come in and I just ask you, what have you, what are your tasks today? You give me tasks in the morning, mm -hmm. the evening. What have you done today? What have you done? Mm -hmm. I had by my wall uh, sticky notes. If you saw the other side of my desk now, where I'm working from, mm -hmm. sticky notes about my task. I need to pace myself. What am I doing? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is, that, that is, 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 you've just given us a lot of rich information here um, in less than an hour in terms of really talking to us about sustainability internally through stakeholders and even making sure that your thematic area is, is more targeted, is more focused, make, making sure that organizations have a strategic plan in order to be sustainable. Just amazing, amazing conversation, Funke. So it looks like, it looks, so don't don't go and start putting your questions after this live as is over because most times when I have have the lives is after everything is over I start seeing questions, but um, but thank you so much. It looks like Funke must have answered all your questions. She must have been that eloquent in terms of the um and the conversation on 
um, having sustainable impact organizations in Africa. Funke, thank you so, so much for your time. Thank you, uh, thank thank you, you for so me much. Too. You really, uh, you, you, you gave us a whole lot of, of, of rich information here on Deaf Sector Series. So, you know, this is not going to be your last time here. You are a friend. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, always a thank pleasure. You. Well, thank, thank you. And maybe we can so have much. a question and a full question and answer session for the next series. Definitely you know, questions. D definitely. Just, um, or what your 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 viewers want to talk about. And exactly. Thank you definitely. very much, everyone. Thank, thank you for listening. Thank you so much. Just a, a bit of feedback here. I see from um, Dr. Bridget Egbonha. This is a very illuminating discussion here. You, I see another one um, here. It says, enjoy the session. And then another one here saying, learning a whole lot here. Um, so, um, and then um, um, Nike also said here, thank you, Funke. I've been thinking about the sustainable way to lead volunteers. You just did justice to that. So it yeah. was it was an excellent conversation again, Funke. Thank you so much. Thank you, F1. Uh, thank you, everyone, for your comments and for listening. Thank you so much. When I speak, so I have said some things that I also <laughs> need to do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Take care, Funke. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye, Bye everyone. Thank you. Bye. So you guys heard uh, Mrs. Funke Barwa talk about um, impact organizations in Africa, making sure that they are sustainable. So thank you so much. I have one more announcement for you all. Um, what I'm going to be saying to you all now is that I have, um, I have a mailing list, okay? So those of you who are interested in Dev Sector Series and want regular reminders of Dev Sector Series, you will put, um, I'm gonna have another post on all my platforms, on Facebook, on LinkedIn, and I will put the post on there. Click on that link and then you will get, um, and then you just sign up to be on my mailing list so that when it's when when we have our next guest you just get reminders via email now go through the whole um the the mailing platforms and you know how they make sure that they are not spamming you or whatever just make sure that you get all that information okay so that you will always be notified about dev sector series so thank you all so much for watching mrs Olufunke Barowa, who is the program officer for Ford Foundation. Thank you so much for watching her. She really did justice to the conversation about building uh, impact organizations in Africa. Again, thank you so much, and I'll see you next week. Take care.